Collision theory tells us that reactant particles are constantly colliding and the vast majority of these collisions don't lead to the forming of new products, as most particle collisions don't occur with enough energy, activation energy. A catalyst is a substance that provides a slightly different route or pathway for a reaction to occur meaning the particles don't have to collide with as much energy in order to react. Catalysts, therefore, lower the activation energy of a reaction. We can show this using reaction profile diagrams, which represent how the energy of reactants change during a reaction, as the products get formed with the activation energy being represented by the increase in energy of the reactants at the start of the reaction, this energy coming from the collisions between reactant particles. When a catalyst is used, an energy profile looks slightly different and has a lower peak in energy than without the catalyst, as the activation energy gets lowered. As particles are constantly colliding every second, if the activation energy is lowered, a greater proportion of these collisions are now successful, increasing the rate of the reaction. The frequency of successful collisions increases. It's really important to understand that the total number of collisions each second and the energy at which those collisions are occurring doesn't change, just that as the activation energy is lowered, suddenly more of the collisions will occur with enough energy to lead to a reaction. We can see this by looking at Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves with number of molecules on the y-axis versus energy of molecules on the x-axis. The area under the curve to the right of the activation energy mark represents the proportion of molecules in a system that can collide with the required activation energy and have successful collisions. If a catalyst is used, the activation energy for the reaction is decreased and now is at a lower energy on the x-axis meaning the area under the curve to the right of this mark now represents a greater proportion of the particles that can collide with the required activation energy compared to with no catalyst. A greater proportion of particles colliding with the required activation energy each second means, <laughs> little surprise, a higher frequency of successful collisions and therefore a faster rate of reaction. There are lots of different ways catalysts can work in a reaction, meaning a one-size-fits-all description doesn't really exist. However, all catalysts enable a reaction to occur by a different route or pathway. It's a bit like trying to get up a mountain. A cable car can help you get up a mountain much quicker and more easily than simply by walking. You start and end in the same place, regardless of how you got up the mountain, it's just you went by a slightly different, faster route if you used the cable car. In the same kind of way, a catalyst can help two reactants react faster by providing a different route to get from the start, the reactants, to the end, the products. The starting and end points are the same, meaning the reactants and products have the same energies. It's just the process has occurred by following a different route or pathway. Just like a cable car can go back down a mountain and be used again, a catalyst in a reaction can also be used again to help other reactant particles react. This is because catalysts don't get used up in reactions. Their concentrations after a reaction remain the same as before. This isn't to say catalysts can't react, some definitely do, and catalysts often change during a reaction by reacting with reactant particles. However, they will always reform before the end of the reaction.